Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on antibiotics and antibiotic resistance. <clears throat> and in this video, what we're going to talk about is penicillin and uh, beta-lactamases, basically, which is a mechanism of uh, resistance to penicillin. So penicillin and uh, beta-lactamases. Right, okay, uh, so firstly, Let's start off with a discussion of what penicillin is actually going to do. So we'll have a reminder of my uh, previous video in which we discussed um, uh, antibiotics which target um, bacterial cell wall biosynthesis. Okay, so remember, once you've synthesized peptidoglycan polymers on the surface of a bacterial cell, so let's say this is our bacterial cell here, then basically what happens on the surface of the bacterial cell is you start synthesizing these polymers known as peptidoglycan polymers. So we synthesize on the surface of the cell peptidoglycan polymers. Okay, and a peptidoglycan polymer basically consists of oscillating N-acetylglucosamine um, molecules with N-acetylmuramyl pentapeptide uh, molecules. So um, you basically continue uh, this pattern on and on again. So you oscillate between, well, you, you um, alternate between N-acetylglucosamine, which I'm denoting as NAG, and then N-acetylmuramyl pentapeptide. Pentapeptide here. So basically that is what um, a peptidoglycan uh, pentapeptide that is basically what a peptidoglycan polymer consists of. It consists of these alternating N-acetylglucosamine um, molecules uh, with N-acetylglucosamine, uh, um, sorry, N-acetylmuramyl um, um, pentapeptide. Okay, so NAG stands for N-acetylglucosamine, and NAM stands for N-acetylmuramyl pentapeptide. So N-acetylmuramyl pentapeptide. Okay, so basically you synthesize these great big long polymers of N-acetylglucosamine linked to N-acetylmuramyl pentapeptide, then linked to N-acetylglucosamine, and then another N-acetylmuramyl pentapeptide, and then it continues on, basically. So you synthesize on the surface of your cells these great big chains of this polymer over and over again, this peptidoglycan polymer. Now, is that any use to anyone? No, it's not. The cell is trying to synthesize um, a cell wall. Single strands of polymer are not a functional cell wall. What you need to do is you need to synthesize absolutely loads of these strands of uh, peptidoglycan polymer, and you need to cross-think them, basically. So you need to connect them together into a meshwork. So you need to put in cross-links between these um, these polymers, basically. Okay, and basically, the way in which you cross-link uh, the peptidoglycan polymers is that the N-acetylmuramyl pentapeptide has a pentapeptide attached to it, basically. So it's, um, let's just briefly go over its structure. So if we look at the structure of the N-acetylmuramyl pentapeptide, then its structure kind of looks like this. It has a six-membered sort of uh, glucose ring. So it's based on glucose. There will be an oxygen up there, okay, and then another carbon going up there. And then it's got this amino group, uh, which is uh, linked to an acetyl group. So I'll draw that in here. So that's the acetyl in this name, N-acetylmuramyl. So you have this acetyl group off this amino group down here. And then off this, um, off this third carbon of this ring, you then have um, a pyruval group, like so. Okay, so a pyruval group, which has a carboxylic acid on one end, and then this uh, methyl group on the other end like so. And then coming off this, you have 
a pentapeptide. You have three amino acids linked to each other. Now, the linkings are not always conventional. For instance, um, the deglutamate, uh, which is the second amino acid in this pentapeptide, um, the, that doesn't have uh, a conventional link with the third amino acid. Instead, what happens is the carboxyl group of the glutamic acid, uh, R group, uh, links with the amino group of the third amino acid. So the linkings aren't always uh, conventional. If you want to see more detail on this, I advise you to watch my video on um, uh, the bacterial cell wall biosynthesis and the antibiotics which affect it. But basically, this first amino acid is L-alanine. The second amino acid is D-glutamate. Uh, the third amino acid can be one of two things. It can either be L-lysine or it can be um, or it can be diaminopimelic acid and it's L-lysine in the case of Staphylococcus aureus and it's L um, and it's diaminopimelic acid in the case of Escherichia coli basically. And then finally you have two D-alanine um, amino acids on the end here. Now the important thing to understand is that the final, um, the final amino acid in this pentapeptide has a, its, carboxyl N, um, its carboxyl group free, basically. And the second important thing to understand is that these L-lysine slash diaminopimelic acid, they both have an amino group right at the end of their R groups. Okay, so they both have four carbons uh, with an amino group right at the end. And in the case of diaminopimelic acid, you then just have a carboxyl group coming off the fourth one as well. Okay, so they both have this amino group. Now, what you do is you link, you find another um, uh, N-acetyl muramyl pentapeptide, and you link the amino group of one uh, uh, N-acetyl muramyl pentapeptide to this carboxyl group at the end of the pentapeptide of another N-acetyl muramyl pentapeptide. And that, that uh, amide link between the amino group and the carboxyl group is what forms the cross links between these peptidoglycan um, polymers, basically. So, the enzyme which undertakes this uh, amide condensation reaction here is the target for penicillins, basically. And that enzyme, which performs these crosslinks, is known as uh, peptidoglycan transpeptidase. Okay, so peptidoglycan transpeptidase. And um, this enzyme has another name. Uh, because penicillin is famous for inhibiting this enzyme, and indeed this enzyme was discovered because of penicillin inhibiting it. It's also called penicillin binding protein, and that name is still quite pervasive in medical literature. Penicillin binding protein. Right, but a name which better suits this uh, enzyme, because you know it, it, it's more important than just being named after a drug which inhibits it. The name which better suits it is peptidoglycan uh, trans... not transferase. Peptidoglycan transpeptidase. I'm sorry, it's been a long day. Transpeptidase. Okay, transpeptidase. Right, that's better. So, peptidoglycan transpeptidase is this enzyme which forges these cross things between the different peptidoglycan uh, strands, basically, and therefore is responsible for creating um, a, a viable um, cell wall, basically. Because if you can't create these cross things between the peptidoglycan polymers, then just creating a load of peptidoglycan strands is not going to comprise a uh, rigid, solid cell wall. It's useless. You have to form these cross links between them. And if you have not got a functional peptidoglycan transpeptidase because it's being inhibited by some drug, then you won't be able to forge these and uh, the, um, pepti the, the cell wall will basically just consist of peptidoglycan strands, which means you don't have a cell wall because it's not a rigid structure protecting the cell from osmotic lysis. So, if you've got no rigid structure around the outside of the cell membrane, then uh, what's going to happen is the hypotonicity 
of the intracellular compartment is going to draw uh, water in from the extracellular compartment into the intracellular compartment by osmosis, and you're going to get osmotic lysis of that cell, and therefore you will kill the cell. Right, so basically what penicillins do is they bind to this peptidoglycan transpeptidase and uh, they uh, basically prevent it from uh, functioning afterwards. So the peptidoglycan transpeptidase actually mistakes um, the penicillin molecule for one of these, um, one of these pentapeptides here and um, it tries to catalyze the same reaction that it would do uh, for the pentapeptide and then basically it can't break one of the bonds so instead the penicillin just remains bound to the um, peptidoglycan transpeptidase uh, uh, permanently basically and then that peptidoglycan transpeptidase is permanently inactivated because it can't catalyze the reaction because penicillin is bound in the active site Okay, right, and we'll uh, call it there for this video, and we'll continue our discussion of penicillins and beta-lactamases in the next video.